many countries have have some fairly good systems. Some countries have excellent systems. And I'm not here to say that uh, how donors and, and multilaterals have been spending their money is a waste of time. Uh, but what I am trying to say is that from our perspective as the DHIS2 platform developers and managers, we see a large um, hodgepodge of different systems being used, very little global uh, coordination or standardization, and a, a, a very wide range of sophistication. And that, I think that is a good foundation to appreciate what do we actually want to do with DHIS2. Uh, Martin, you can go ahead and start recording now. Uh, looks like you are, great. Okay, so what do we wanna do with DHIS2? Well, we want DHIS2 to be the single platform. And the platform, that a platform, our DHIS2 platform is not just one thing, it's many different apps, right? You all use DHIS2, hopefully, you know that it's made up of different applications, kind of just like on, on your smartphone, there's multiple applications. DHIS2 is the same kind of platform. But we want that platform to have all of the apps and tools that are necessary for facility level and community health worker level logistics reporting. We wanna make sure that you can use DHIS2 and the apps that are within that ecosystem to be able to report all of your supply chain at the lowest levels. Again, that's one of the biggest issues that uh, we've seen. You don't have to take my word for it. That's something that Global Fund and WHO and Gavi have all published is that there is a lack of resources and tools at the lowest levels for logistics reporting. And we want DHIS2 to be able to be that tool. Um, many countries are already using DHIS2 at the lowest levels for disease uh, reporting, uh, surveillance reporting, uh, service delivery reporting. And so we want that to be able to be extended into supply chain as well. We also want to develop standards for supply chain indicators and reporting in partnership with the WHO, with the CDC, with Gavi, Global Fund, and others. And we've actually established these, these, li these lines of communication. We have already developed some of these standards in partnership with WHO, and we'll be presenting those throughout the week, starting tomorrow, actually. Um, and But we want to continue to develop on this. We want everyone to kind of appreciate uh, some, some harmony here. And, uh, and make sure that DHIS2 is able to support that, those standards. Also very importantly, we want DHIS2 to have as easy interoperability with other supply chain and logistics software out there. We know that many of you, and I've uh, previously said this, are using other systems. Maybe you're using Medexis, OpenLMIS, MSupply, or maybe you've developed something locally. But we want to make sure that if those platforms, those other supply chain software that you're using, and maybe you, that you like them a lot, and we're not saying that you should change necessarily, but if you do like that, you do want to use it, then at least on the DHIS2 side, it should be able to speak to them, those systems. Now, the question always becomes is, can those systems speak to DHIS2, right? It's a two-way street. You know, the interoperability can't only be on the DHIS2 side, it has to be on their side as well. And that's usually where things start to break down, is we, we maintain what we call API, that's Application Programming Interface. That's the back-end interface of DHIS2. Uh, we maintain interoperability standards there. And I think on Thursday, Morton, our lead interoperability engineer, is going to take us through some of those. And we're going to hear from John Lewis, who's uh, practically used them to make interoperability with, with some supply chain software out there. But we want to make sure that we maintain these standards so that if another system wants to be able to talk to DHIS2, it's as easy as possible for them to do that. That requires a lot a lot of work on our end to maintain these standards, you know, developer time. And time that, you know, we're not developing new features and shiny buttons and new, new fancy apps. This is all work on the back end that basically no one ever sees unless you are trying to connect two systems together. But it's necessary and we we want to and we we supply we make sure that we have the resources required to be able to do that. Um, we want to be able to calculate or produce all key logistics indicators and analytics. So all any and all supply chain indicators 
that you deem are as necessary or that the donors and multilaterals uh, or say are standard or required, we want to make sure that that value can be calculated in DHIS2. That DHIS2 has the functionality, the ability to be able to produce that value and produce it accurately to produce it, um, that value whenever you need it. Right? That, that number is always available to you. And it's available to you on any type of analytics that you need, that you want to see. So whether it's a scatter plot, a bar chart, a map, a pivot table, a dashboard, a standard report. However, you want to actually see that indicator. We wanna make sure that that indicator can be seen in that way, the way that's the most, most appropriate to you. Second to last point here is that we want to also provide the guidance to countries and users how to get LMIS data into DHIS2. Um, and this academy is the very first step to providing this larger global guidance. Again, this is the first time we've ever even done this academy. Uh, and so you're all a little bit of a, a guinea pig right now. We're all, you know, you're, you're the first cohort of folks that we're kind of testing this academy on. We certainly appreciate your patience and we do very much appreciate your feedback, but this is the first step for us as a platform, as DHIS2 um, uh, owners. And for you yourself as the DHIS2 user community that is interested in supply chain, to start to build out this kind of guidance uh, that can be handed into countries. And again, I talked about wanting to build a community of practice after this. I think that's one of the major goals of the Academy is that this doesn't end on next Tuesday, that, that we are actually all kind of moving together as a global community, sharing ideas, learnings, lessons, best practices, resources um, uh, collectively to actually just move us all forward together. This is something it's uh, this is not a zero sum game. This is something that everyone in the world can benefit from. And we want to make sure we have those connections in place to be to, to be able to allow that. And then the last bullet point, and this is the most important bullet point, probably the most important point of the entire presentation today. So I might repeat it several times. It's also going to be one of the quiz questions at the end of today. We do not want to develop DHIS2 to be a warehouse information system or to be a complete ERP. That's electronic report and, and uh, electronic requisition and reporting system. That's like the kind of systems that you see at grocery stores or, 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 or supermarkets with um, at checkout counters. DHIS2 will not ever be those um, systems. And the reason is, is because those systems require a fundamentally different database architecture than what DHIS2 has. So uh, you will never probably see DHIS2 core applications that are developed out of University of Oslo functioning in a warehouse. You may see other software that are um, working with DHIS2 that are operating in a warehouse. Uh, and I think that we're actually getting, we're working towards that goal. Um, but DHIS2 will probably not be the warehouse solution for you. But that takes me back to the, um, the second bullet, or, sorry, the third bullet point here, which is that we want to make sure that we have as good interoperability as possible with these systems so that these systems are talking to each other. And I think that that brings me to this point here this is a model of what um, our good friends over at iPlus Solutions who developed the Medexis platform are trying to uh, uh, produce in Burundi uh, and um, potentially some other countries as well, but currently ongoing work in Burundi. And Bur Burundi is using DHIS2 as their health information system, as, as, as many of you are. Um, but... And they, and they capture data at facility level in DHIS2. So what are we trying to do? On the left side, you see the um, supply chain information systems. And then on the right side, you see DHIS2 serving as the health information system. In the middle, you have the various levels of the Burundi um, health hierarchy. So it starts at smaller health facilities, then you have larger hospitals, then you have district level, regional level, and central or national level. So what are we trying to do? 
I think that this actually serves as a great example of uh, what we are trying to build DHIS2 to be able to support. First of all, you have DHIS2 at the lowest levels, at the lowest health facility levels, community health worker level. And that means that we want, we don't want to give them, you know, as we don't want to give them a lot of different tools. We want the people working at those levels to have one tool that they can use to report all of their data. We don't want them to have to use multiple apps or different devices or go between lots of different registries to find, you know, we just want it all to be in one place, simple, easy, clean as possible. Um, and we are configuring DHIS2 to be that tool at the lowest levels, health facilities and community health worker level, DHIS2 is capturing all of the supply chain data, right? Then that data is then pushed into Medexis. And Medexis is serving at, uh, at larger hospitals, district level and regional level, and also global, uh, uh, national level. To, uh, to perform the higher functions of a supply chain information system. Those are um, uh, warehouse management, uh, routing and fleet management, um, uh, de de developing pick lists and um, commodity catalogs. Um, these things that DHIS2 is not so good at. And that's exactly fine. I mean, DHS2 is not uh, not always the best tool for every job. So Medexis is there and we, our developers, are, are working with the Medexis developers um, to try to form very close connections and interoperability between these two platforms. Uh, and actually, I think on, um, I think it is Thursday where we will have the team from Medexis actually present on what they're doing in Burundi. And I think they're gonna actually be able to demonstrate this to you. So you don't have to take my word for it. It's something that we'll be able to see. Um, so, so, but of course, Medexis is not just, data is not just pushing from DHIS2 into Medexis. Medexis is also pushing data back and forth with DHIS2. So if you're looking at DHIS2, you're able to see the supply chain data, you're able to see the supplies at health facility level, then you're able to see the supplies at health facility level, and you're able to see your patient uh, data at, in DHIS2, and you're able to have these two, and you're able to put all of that data into one dashboard, into composite indicators, and that's how you're able to do your root cause analysis, your bottleneck analysis. Um, of course, above Medexis, looking at the highest level in the top left corner of this diagram, uh, you have some ERP. So you have like things like Oracle or Sage. Um, some countries have this, other countries don't. Um, it's not, I don't think it's actually, from my experience, necessary that you do have a fully functional ERP to have a, a very functional supply chain. Um, maybe some other um, folks may disagree, but um, uh, at least in the Burundi case, they're trying to uh, push this to a um, uh, another higher level ERP. So this is a, I think this is a good model. And I, I think Medexis, you know, they may actually uh, present this model again, but um, to me, this is one of the clearest pictures of what we're actually trying to get DHIS2 to, to be able to, to, to do. Again, capture data at the lowest levels, produce those analytics and indicators around supply chain, all the way up through all levels, and then have the more specialized functions that are required for a well-functioning supply chain, like warehouse management, in a product, a platform, like Medexis that is specifically developed for it, um, and, and have the data moving back and forth between the two. In the future, you know, could it be that Medexis is presented in DHIS2 ecosystem? Could Medexis just be maybe another application within DHIS2? You know, possibly. And it's something that we're going to be exploring over the, over the next several months uh, with them as well as our other partners. But as it stands right now, Medexis is a separate platform and we're working with their, their engineers are working with ours to make sure that those systems are able to speak to each other. Okay, so this is kind of what we want to be able to do. How are we going to get there? So we commonly say that now we have four legs to our LMIS approach at here at the University of Oslo, as well as with our, our, our partners in this. The first leg is that we have new DHIS2 functionality. 
The second one is that we have new content. Of course, this academy being one of those. We have the third leg being interoperability integration. Again, I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but we'll go into a slight a bit more detail. And the fourth leg being some technical expertise. So people who actually know both the DHIS2, who know supply chain and are able to actually de develop solutions in partnership and collaboration. So let me just go into each one of these uh, in a little bit more detail quickly. So functionality. Over the last um, three or four years, we've been developing a lot of new features in DHIS2 to facilitate both the data capture as well as the calculation of indicators and the presentation of those indicators in DHIS2. For example, in the capture app, that's the Android capture app, what you use on your mobile device, you are now able to do QR code scanning and barcode scanning of commodities as they come in. And George McGuire, I think on um, uh, later in the week, will actually be presenting on how the International Red Cross is currently doing this in field hospitals in Yemen, which is, is, is gonna be really exciting to see. Very cutting edge use of DHIS2, but we know that scanning barcode, especially for immunizations, is extremely important. You wanna get that batch number, you wanna get the commodity details, um, you wanna get it in the same place that you have your patient data, because if there's an adverse event or reaction to any of the immunizations or drugs that are being given out, you wanna know who received that drug, who got that shot from that vial, from that batch number, and you want that to be all able to be easily put in through barcode scanning. And so now we have that, we have that in DHIS2, um, and you can use that today if you're using DHIS2 uh, and uh, the mobile app, the mobile capture app. We also, have been developing resources, technology resources, like the, the API that I mentioned earlier, as well as many others, to be able to support local innovations within DHIS2, to be able to capture supply chain data. And um, we're going to have a few of these present. So in Mali and Burkina Faso, HIS West Africa, that's Adam Kosi's team, he, again, he's gonna be presenting tomorrow on this. They developed an app for the capture of supply chain data. Um, and that's the picture at the top. The first picture at the top you see, that is the application that they've made. Uh, and it provides, it does a lot of calculations automatically. It provides a really good, clean user interface for the lowest levels to be able to enter in their supply chain data. Um, and so Edom is gonna be able to present that tomorrow. We also, um, in Bangladesh, a group of developers has made up a kind of a fork of DHIS2 called D2Log. And this is uh, basically, a, like I said, a, a fork of DHIS2 specifically for supply chain. Um, so, so that's another innovation within the, the DHIS2 ecosystem and community. And then the last one, which is the, the bottom picture here, that is from Uganda. Uganda has also developed a supply chain application for the capture of supply chain data at lowest levels. Um, and so that's what you can see there as well. And we want to support these local innovations. We wanna make sure that DHIS2 is a platform that people can build apps into. And those applications can be say unique for Malawi, or sorry, for Mali, Burkina Faso, or Uganda, um, but it can still feed data into the same uh, data warehouse uh, uh, or backend and produce indicators and analytics using the common applications like maps and charts and pivot tables and scorecards. The third point to make on the functionality is that we want to be able to integrate aggregate and tracker mobile data together. And um, in, so if you're entering aggregated data and you're entering tracker data, if you're not sure what tracker is, tracker is um, the modality of data capture that we have in DHIS2 to, to track individual, um, what we call tracked entities, which could be a patient. It also could be a drug or maybe a stock out. It doesn't necessarily have to be something tangible. It can be the lack of something like a stock out. Um, and we want to make sure that those different, those different types of data can be captured in one tool as well. And so again, with the, um, the new Android application, the new Android capture app, you're actually able to capture both aggregate data and tracker data 
in one app. There's not moving back and forth between multiple apps. There's, there's just one app. All the data can be put in in that one place. You only have to provide one training to the health staff to be able to enter that data, right? So that's a new innovation and that's largely built on um, uh, the development of the C stock system, which I'll talk about in a little bit, in just a, just a few minutes uh, in Kenya. Some additional functionality. Now, if you're a DHIS2 techie, you're going to appreciate this a lot. If you're not so technical in DHIS2, maybe this might go a little bit over your head, but I'll just try to make it as simple as I, as I possibly can. And I think later in the week, we will come back to going into this in more detail. But um, starting in DHIS 2.29, uh, all the way up into DHIS 2.34, which is um, we're currently at DHIS 2.35, DHIS 235. But from 29 to 34, we built in something called predictors. And predictors are a special way in which you are able to calculate indicators in DHIS2 or calculate values in DHIS2 referencing previously reported data. So this is very important. Being able to reference previously rep reported data gives us the ability to say like calculate um, consumption averages, right? Consumption averages then can be used to calculate um, things like um, uh, stock status and resupply values and these really key supply chain indicators. Um, so predictors have been there actually now, so for about two and a half, three years. Uh, and those can um, today be used to calculate some very complex supply chain indicators. We also have built in um, some advanced indicator logic. So little known fact, if you're a DHIS2 techie, you're probably not aware that um, on the bottom picture here, so if you look at the bottom picture, you can actually see that I'm building and you can build indicators now in DHIS2 that have some aggregation logic in them. For example, if statements. So you can see here's an indicator that like that's saying like, if this, then do this. If not, then do this. If not, then do this. If not, then actually it's the if and or statement. So if this or this or this or this or this do count one. If you didn't follow me, that's okay. But it's just basically to say that you can build out fairly complex logic in standard indicators now. That can become a very important. For example, I want to count the number of health facilities that are stocked out of all malaria commodities. So I can say, if this stock equals zero for ACT um, uh, sixes, if the stock is zero for ACT 12s, if the stock is zero for ACT 18s, and the stock is zero for ACT uh, um, 24s, uh, then count one. And that would tell me, that would actually put a value for all of the health facilities that are stocked out of all anti-malarial drugs. And then you'd be able to build maps and charts and dashboards and stuff with that number to show, hey, now, you know, get a total count of the number of health facilities that are stocked out of all malaria drugs, for example. Again, we're gonna go over this in a lot more detail later in the week. So if I'm losing you now, it's okay. But just to let you know that these kind of functionalities are available. And of course, we the last bullet point is we have something called program rules, um, which we are now able to connect an individual dosage of a commodity to a specific patient. So you're actually now able to, um, uh, say that this patient got a shot from this vial. So in the case of like adverse events or something like that, we're able to make those relationships and produce some analytics around them. So what are some of the indicators just to give you a snapshot? And again, we're gonna go over this in a lot more detail later in the week. We're able to do things like resupply values based upon average consumption as well as seasonal trends. Again, yeah, average consumption maybe average consumption is looking at, and you can define your average consumption. Maybe you wanna look at the last three uh, months. Maybe you wanna look at the last six months. Maybe because you're looking at some kind of seasonal consumption like with malaria or rotavirus or something like that, um, uh, uh, you have a kind of a more seasonal uh, um, uh, frequency um, 
of these kinds of diseases, then you want to say, I don't want to look at the average consumption over the last three months. I want to look at the average consumption over for this month over the last three years, right? If you're going into the epi curve, right? You don't want to look at the last three months because that would be misleading because that, that has a lower consumption. You want to look at maybe the consumption over the last three years at the same point in time. So you can do that as well. So this is all very um, definable by you. You can also do stuff like stock status. So I want to say the facilities that are understocked, adequate stocked, or overstocked, and you want to count these, um, or you want to have a percentage of each. Order fill rates, so how much did they ask for versus how much did they actually receive. The number of stock out days. Lead time, which is the amount of time between when a facility needs a drug to when they actually receive the drug. And we are also able to do, de depending upon how you configure DHIS2, line listing of something like current stock outs or the total number of stockouts over time. So we say, where are those facilities today that have a stockout of some drug? We can do that kind of analytics and calculation in DHIS2 now. If you don't believe me, you can take a Malawi's word for it. Malawi, um, Mongini from His Malawi will be presenting this later. Um, just a quick look, this is the, um, some of the work that they've been doing and building out some supply chain indicators and analytics. Um, and it's really incredible what they've managed to achieve over the last um, year and a half, where they're actually able to see now in Malawi, where do they have stockouts of various drugs? And what is the st uh, stock status for each one of, at each facility for each one of the key commodities that they track? Uh, they've really done a lot of work to kind of in the guesswork. They, they know where, oftentimes where the stock problems are now in Malawi through connecting open LMIS with DHIS2 to be able to produce these kinds of analytics. Um, and so this is actually a picture uh, directly from the Malawi HMIS. And so we'll go over a little bit this in more detail. I think Mongini will have an excellent presentation on how they managed to do these kinds of analytics um, and, and these kind of indicators in DHIS2. Again, more types of analytics. On the left, you see a, um, a, a custom dashboard app that his West Africa built for, I believe it is, it is Mali. And in this application, they're able to um, monitor the stock status at facilities uh, and give key indicators and analytics for, um, to monitor um, the current stock availabilities as well. Uh, again, on the right side here, we have some analytics from Malawi. And again, this is also like demo data as well. So you don't have to, if you're trying to study this in detail, you're not actually under, you're not actually seeing what the, the current status in Malawi, of course. This is all demo data and it's quite old now as well. But, um, but you can see that Malawi is actually able to build in um, uh, some really incredible um, ratios. So like stock on hand to consumption or to caseload ratio or consumption um, to issuance ratio. These kinds of ratios where they actually put the supply chain data in the same indicator as the service delivery or case data, right? They have it in one place now. So they can build these kinds of indicators and these indicators are very useful for forecasting, for planning, for policy development, uh, for looking at uh, how disease trends and patterns are affecting supply data or uh, commodity availability data. They're able, because they have the data in one place, they're actually able to build these indicators. And it's, it's a, it's, and it's a very, uh, uh, um, can be very powerful, very useful analytics to have. Okay, so that's on the technology innovations. Let's talk about the content that we're working on. And again, we're gonna go over this in quite a lot of detail starting tomorrow. And then George is gonna take us through some of the indicators later in the week. But just to suffice this little bit of an overview right now, over the last, I think about four years, uh, the University of Oslo as a, um, uh, a, a WHO um, a contributing partner has been working with them to develop what we call standard metadata packages. These are um, packages of pre-configured DHIS2 reporting forms, data elements, indicators, dashboards. Sorry for the Slack notification. Um, and they um, are there available for you on our website as well as the WHO website to download. They come with guidance materials, PowerPoint presentations, uh, 
for you to install. So for example, if you are a country that's brand new starting and you want to start an HIV program, which most country, most every country already has an HIV surveillance program, but just to say that you were starting from scratch or you wanted to update your existing one to follow the new global guidelines, we have already configured the data elements and the indicators and the dashboards following the WHO standards for you. So you can grab that standard metadata package and you can just simply install it into your DHIS2 instance. And you may, will probably have to do some configuration, a little bit of customization based upon your, your clinical workflows, how your, your country is structured. But for the most part, it's, it's, it's done there. It's, it's, it's something that you can start to utilize much more quickly than say if you had to develop it from scratch yourself. Um, so these exist for many different WHO programmatic areas. So you have HIV, immunization, malaria, tuberculosis. Um, I know that they're working on integrated disease surveillance. They have um, maternal and child health. They have immunis uh, yeah, sorry, I already mentioned immunization. Uh, they're currently working on non-communicable diseases as well. Uh, there also is one for COVID-19 if you were interested in that. Um, and we are additionally now building on top of these supply chain indicators and components. So we are building out a standard metadata package, just like we have for these various diseases, one for supply chain data. So no longer is it just disease specific data, it's also the supply chain data that goes with these specific diseases. So, um, and you can see an example of that on the, on the second picture on the right. So looking at some stock indicators. Again, George is gonna go over this in detail. I'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow as well. But this is really exciting that we have some pre-developed content available. Second, uh, the third leg to our stool here is around interoperability and integration. We are expanding our conversations and communication with other supply chain systems like OpenLMIS, MSupply, and specifically a lot with Medexis as well. Um, uh, and, and we want to make sure that we are able to be able to speak to these systems. Um, you know, and if you're asking like, well, can you talk to my system that was developed in my country? That's an answer, that's a question that I can't really answer because I don't know anything about your system. But these are three platforms. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are three platforms that are some of the more commonly used ones. Um, in that, you know, there's there's a handful of countries, you know, probably a little bit less than 10 using each one of these systems. Um, and so because of that, we want to make sure that we are having starting to establish some bilateral relationships with these various platforms to be able to have as, as, as good interoperability as possible. Um, next year, uh, we've started that conversation, those conversations now. Next year, they're going to really take off because next year we're going to have additional resources on our end, developer resources, hopefully to be able to more seamlessly connect these to these platforms. Um, and the last point that I want to make is that we have now some additional expertise. Um, we will have a LMIS starting next year uh, here at the University of Oslo. We will have an LMIS portfolio lead. That's actually uh, Breno. He's on this. I've seen him post some questions to the logistics Slack channel. Um, so hopefully this time next year, Bruno will be giving this presentation. We're really excited to have Bruno. He's coming to us from the Norwegian Red Cross, a tremendous amount of experience, practical field experience on implementing supply chain and information systems. Um, uh, and so, so he's, he's going to be kind of uh, uh, steering the ship to some degree um, starting next year here at the University of Oslo. Um, which is the first time that we've ever had anyone solely devoted to um, sitting here at the university, solely devoted to LMIS. So that's that's a huge addition. We also have George McGuire here. You're going to hear a lot of presentations from providing, uh, uh, working as a DHIS2 technical advisor. Um, uh, George is, is, again, one of the world's experts on supply chain, at least um, amongst amongst all the folks that I've met, certainly. Certainly um, a fantastic addition to the team. And the big news is, and this, you know, you're some of the first folks to hear this in the whole world, is that we have a new partnership with the University of Basel, the Swiss Tropical Health Institute, um, uh, and ourselves, the University of Oslo, to develop a partnership 
an actual organization. It's called the Stella Organization based in the University of Basel. They're going to present next Tuesday. And this partnership, this organization comes with additional resources, both human resources, implementation advisors, technical experts, but also technology partners as well. Uh, so trying to plug in not just with the three software uh, other platforms that I mentioned, but with a lot of other very, much more advanced technologies. We're talking about like machine learning. There's some talk around blockchain and, and these, these really cutting, a lot of cutting edge um, technologies and um, that, that we could start building around and, and collaborating with. It's also being very practical. This, this organization, the Stella Partnership, uh, will focus on providing global guidelines and global guidance and, and hopefully producing some standardization, of course, in partnership with, with WHO and Global Fund, uh, et cetera. But, but starting to be kind of a, re a resource hub that, that we can, that anyone in the world can start to utilize. So we're really excited about this partnership. You know, the, the addition of these two people on our team, um, which again, you will be introduced to George this week and um, Brenna will hopefully be someone that you're working with in the future, as well as the collaboration on this Stella partnership with the University of Basel and the Swiss TPH means that there's about to be a lot of um, uh, resources and expertise in the DHIS2 community on supply chain. And so something that I hope all of you feel that you are able to, to take advantage of, to tap into, they're gonna be here to help you. Okay, so I think that is all that we will be presenting for today. Um, Martin, can you help me uh, with any questions that are coming through on the Slack channel? So again, yep. if you have any questions, please post those to the Slack channel. We have a few minutes now. We can answer any questions that you have. So uh, we're taking your questions through Slack. Martin, are there any questions out there? Yeah, thank you, Scott. Uh, yeah, first I would like to remind everyone that the uh, word of the day is welcome if you haven't already got it. Some of you may have come in late and didn't get it before. So remember, it is welcome. Right, we do have at least two questions uh, from the Ask About Logistics. First one is from uh, Brino. Uh, Scott, can you see the question? I, it's pretty long, so I don't sure I want to. Yeah, I do it. see the question. Um, so a question, Bruno's question is coming about software development, understanding the ability to share information among various platforms from a technical architecture perspective. Um, will we touch on this and, and will we be able to talk about a little bit about interoperability? Yes, we will. I'm forgetting the day. Uh, we have a day specifically on interoperability where um, uh, Morton, who is our lead interoperability engineer here at the university, will take us through some of the fundamentals of interoperability. And then we have John Lewis, who again is leading his um, uh, Vietnam, talk about how they managed to form interoperability specifically with M Supply. Um, there in Southeast Asia. Um, we will not be going into a lot of very technical detail on interoperability. This is not a super technical academy. There is a developer's academy that is for, if you're a DHIS2 developer and you're listening to this right now, I think that it's important that you appreciate that there is a specific academy on how to develop applications um, and make connections between multiple systems, make applications within DHIS2 and make connections between multiple platforms and DHIS2. That's the Developers Academy. They, they offer it several times a year. So I think that that would be the, the form at which they go into a lot of technical detail. Um, but we will be giving you an overview, at least give you a, a list of key things to consider and show you some examples of it. Um, all right, so the questions are coming in a little bit quicker now. Um, Pascal says in the indicator calculations, uh, internal validation rules to be built in between levels of health facility, hospitals, ministry of health levels. Uh, there's often confusion errors around data standards stores, um, uh, specifically that stores are greater than secondary box packages or containers, cartons. Uh, pharmacies have more containers and blisters and dispensary levels uh, have more single tablets. So, Yes, uh, Pascal, that's a really great question. Actually, two weeks ago, we had a specific academy um, on how to build validation rules and data quality checks into DHIS2. All of these different um, scenarios that you just described about inconsistencies in stock levels across multiple um, uh, uh, places or sites can be checked with data standard data quality checks already existing in DHIS2. 
Uh, again, we have a whole academy on that. That was actually just two weeks ago that we did that academy. Uh, I believe that the materials are also still available online for that. So if you just wanna know how to build validation rules, data quality checks, use the various data quality tools in DHIS2, you can do that. Now the question then becomes, do we have these specifically for supply chain? And the answer to that one is no. We have not developed kind of standard validation rules or data quality checks for some of the supply chain um, uh, indicators and data elements reporting forms that we have been developing uh, with WHO. That needs to come next. We need to actually start working on that. You know, it's it's one thing to have, um, uh, you know, the, the standard indicators and data elements together that countries can use. It's very helpful, but it's a whole nother level of usefulness for them to also have guidance on how to analyze the data, as well as to make sure the data is clean, accurate, and validated. Um, and we need to build those kinds of guidance into the standard metadata packages as well. We don't have it yet. This is all still very new. Um, so that will be hopefully the, the next steps that the, the LMIS team um, will, be, will be working on. I think also Brenna, uh, sorry, George does actually have a lot of guidance. And I think George hopefully will be able to go over this in his presentations later in the week on how some of these indicators can be used. Um, and maybe some, and maybe George, you can also speak to some of the data quality, common data quality mistakes or issues that you, you might see among them. Um, uh, Sophie asks, um, is there a general perspective about common about consumption definition between service delivery points versus medical stores? Um, I think that's a great question that you that would be good for um, George or one of the supply chain, more technical supply chain experts to, to, to go over in the, the coming days. So I think that maybe we'll put a pin in that question there. So be, um, Martin is reposting a question from uh, Tentley and asking, um, do we need administrative privileges in order to customize DHIS2 LMI, the DHIS2 LMIS app? Well, there's a couple of things here to be said. The first one is that there is not a specific LMIS application within DHIS2. We are customizing or really just configuring the existing applications to be able to capture uh, supply chain data, as well as visualize or analyze that supply chain data. So there is no custom app. There is no specific supply chain application currently in DHIS2 um, that we develop as uh, here at the University of Oslo. Now, what you will see throughout the course of this week and, and a little bit next week are some of the apps that have been developed amongst the community. So people in, in West Africa or um, in Vietnam developing applications that are specifically uh, for supply chain data capture or analytics. Um, and so those apps uh, may be, are, are, are fairly customized. Um, they may come with different privilege settings, but if you're using core DHIS2 to capture, I mean, not a custom app, if you're just using a core DHIS2 generic application to capture uh, supply chain data or visualize supply chain data, you will have to have administrative privileges to edit um, uh, um, and configure those applications. Um, so it's not something that you can do if you if you are not a DHIS2 administrator, uh, very likely. All right, some more questions coming in. So we still we still have a bit of time here. Um, so please do ask your questions. Um, so he so Fik. Ask, uh, sorry, is there someone speaking? Yes, it was me, sorry. I thought it, oh. you, yeah, no, just to remind the Mentimeter. All right. Okay, so let me just ask, a, let me just answer one or two more questions here and then we will go over to the Mentimeter. Yeah, we're not done for the day, so please don't leave. <laughs> um, what are your recommendations for LMIS in country? Um, Okay, that's a that's a bit of a loaded question. That one will take a little bit of a longer answer. Uh, I would say a reference to I guess the uh, the slide on what the, the that we got from Medexis on Burundi. I think that's my general recommendation. Okay, so Alice, thank you so much for the reminder. I'm sorry to just keep on <laughs> rambling here. Uh, I will that's hand it. Okay. I will. I'll hand it back over to you. I'll stop presenting my screen. Yes. And you can take us through the uh, yeah Mentimeter for the day. So over to you. Okay. Cool, just a minute. So I will invite everyone. Do you all see my screen? 
Yes. Miss Alice. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so I would invite each of you to go on menti.com and then enter the following code: seventy-two fifty-eight. One seven six. So I will give you one minute to do so. And then we will get started. So it's very simple. Uh, I will we, we will ask you some questions. You will have a few seconds to reply. And then Scott will tell, let you know the correct answer and maybe a few explanations if needed. Is that okay, Scott? Yep, sounds great. We will start very soon, 10 seconds. Okay, let's start then. Or maybe, um, Martin, can you double check in the chat whether anyone has any Problem joining us on Mentimeter on yeah on Mentimeter. Just just to make sure, do we need to have use the phone or can we use it directly from the browser? Oh, you can use it for the from the browser too. No problem. Okay. Yeah, because the link takes us to an instruction to use the phone. So you basically type men www.menti.com. Okay, let's start with the first question. Hmm. Okay, sorry, I'm having some trouble moving to the next question actually. Ah, here it is. Yes, now it works great. Yes, so first question. Question should be posted on Zoom, Slack, or I don't know. People keep rooting, that's good. Okay, so let's show the correct answer. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Hopefully everyone knows that the correct answer is Slack. We yes, are using the... Slack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Then... We were able to see uh, Alice uh, from your uh, screen sharing okay. uh, what, the, what the majority was voting and that was the correct answer. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Then second question. It is critically important to have supply chain data in the HMIS. True? False?
That's good. Yeah, I think uh, on this one, I'd be very interested to hear the opinion of the 16 people that said false. <laughs> Um, certainly not part of the, the general global guidance um, and understanding, but you certainly, I mean, it, it, you know, there are uh, now 17 people. I mean, there, there are many different opinions on this. Like I said, there's really very little standardization out there. Um, but I think in our experience, we really can't do the bottleneck analysis, the root cause analysis. We can't actually uh, start to appreciate why are we having issues in our clinical service delivery unless we get the supply chain data in with the HMIS, um, something that, that many countries are, are struggling with. So if we see that our service delivery, our coverage rates are going down, our immunization coverage rates are going down, a lot of times that's an issue with the supply chain. Maybe we've, we've run out of supply chain stocks. Maybe we've had a, ma a lot of expire. You know, and if we don't have that data in one place, we can't really actually start to figure out what the issue is. Um, and so that's why ourselves in partnership with the WHO and, and many other multilaterals are trying to stress that we try to get all this data into, into one place, the HMIS, which is often DHIS2. But again, the 70 people that said no, certainly I would like to appreciate your opinion as well on the subject. The correct answer was? Well, the correct answer is true. And, yeah. you know, in our opinion. In our opinion. Then, next question. Select all that apply. Uh, we want DHS2 to be able to capture all LMIS data at facility level, able to calculate all LMIS indicators, able to, vis to visualize all LMIS data, serve as a warehouse information system. On this one, we do actually have a little bit more of a clear um, specific answer in that we as DHIS2 platform developers are not trying to develop DHIS2 to work as a warehouse information system. Again, a warehouse information system has a fundamentally different database architecture than what DHIS2 is. Um, some people do use DHIS2 to manage warehouses but it is definitely not something that we would recommend. Uh, so for those 37 folks who said to serve as a warehouse information system, please, oh, now 38, someone even had another one. Uh, please uh, talk to us and maybe reconsider using DHIS2 to, to manage your warehouse. It's not the best tool for that job. Um, and it's very important for us as University of Oslo to have you appreciate what DHIS2 can do but even more important that you understand what DHIS2 cannot do. We certainly know the limitations of DHIS2 better than anyone. And I would just make a highly a strong recommendation that DHIS2 not serve as your warehouse information system. Okay, um, and the other three are correct. Yeah, we of course do want DHS to be able to capture all supply chain data at facility level. We do want it to be able to calculate all LMIS indicators, and we do absolutely want it to be able to visualize all um, LMIS data, but just the, 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 the function of like the day-to-day -day operations of managing a warehouse, it's not really the best tool for that job. Thank you, Scott. Um, it was the last question. Great. So then we need to point folks to the feedback forms as well as the participant. Oh, sorry. Uh, Alice, would you mind sharing your screen and going through quickly the Slack uh, channels again and functionality? I think we have a, a few who uh, missed that part. 
Yes, just give me a second so that I can go on Slack. And Alice, can we also take a look at the feedback form and the participant survey as well? Yes, just let me go first through, let me share my screen. Okay. Which functionalities exactly, um, Martin? Uh, Everything? Please show the, uh, the channels, what, what you want to use for which type of questions? Yes, no problem. So, um, we will be for any announcement that we would like to to make if you want to inform you guys about anything we will use the channel announcements that you can you can you can, no sorry it's not the correct i'm sorry it's not the correct slack channel i have multiple ones uh open obviously but it will be the same idea just give me a second. No, it's not this one. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Uh, right. We are it. also getting uh, some feedback that our feedback and survey uh, link are not working either. So we will be handling those issues as soon as possible. Uh, let me just, okay. So if I do that, then it will be, Okay, so now normally you see, you're all seeing the LMIS level two academy Slack channel, correct? Martin, if you can confirm, yeah? Yeah, that is the right uh, Slack. Okay, thanks. So we have, you will see, we, we have the different channels here. So for any, as I was saying, for any information that we would like to send you, um, we will use this channel announcement. So I would advise that you keep an eye on these channels, uh, on, on these channels, if you want to be informed about any major updates. Then we have the channel ask about logistics. If you have any questions regarding, or if you want any tips regard, regarding logistics um, at large, if I can say, do not hesitate to, to, to use this channel. And we will make sure that one of our facilitator or one of the training member, um, training team member will try to make sure that uh, you get a reply as soon as possible. Then the two following channels are also quite interesting because tomorrow from 1.15 to 2.15 and also uh, Thursday from 1.15 to 2.15, we will be hosting the experts' lounges. So the experts' lounges are basically a, a, an hour session where an expert, in this case, for Africa, uh, especially West Africa. Um, our partner from his West Central Africa will be, will be facilitating this channel discussion. So for one hour tomorrow from 1.15 to 2.15. If you are based in Africa, if you have any questions related to logistics uh, in your local context, uh, don't hesitate to participate in this conversation um, that will be held once again tomorrow from 1.15 to 2.15 Oslo time. Then the same will happen again on Thursday. We will be, we will be hosting another experts lounge this time for Asia, Asia Pacific region. So if you are based in Asia and would like to ask some questions about logistics, still same time, Thursday from 1.15 to 2.15, we will have our partner from HISP Vietnam who will be dedicating one hour just to reply to your questions, um, giving you some specific tips um, on logistics in Asia region. Then the, the other channel really interesting is introduce yourself because we want to know where you come from, where you're based, what you're doing, for which organization you are working. So do not hesitate to drop a few words on this, on this channel um, so that we get to know you a little bit more. And then finally, we'll find the last channel. If you have any technical issues like uh, difficulties to, to, to access um, 
one of the platform or the videos or the forms, uh, you can drop us an email, a message here, and we will try to make sure um, that we sort this out. We see that some people, some participants have some problem with the attendance link. We will sort this out as soon as possible. I'm sure my colleagues, Simona and Martin are currently working on that. So give us two minutes and we'll make sure it is sorted. And once it's, it is sorted, we'll post a message to let you know here in technical support channel and announcements channel as well. Um, final thing for those who arrive a little bit late, uh, but you probably received the information by email. Um, I sent an email, I believe last week. So we will be, besides Slack, we will be using the LMIS repository um, uh, folder. It's a Google Drive folder that I shared with you. So in this folder, you will be, you will be finding the attendance and feedback form. Feedback form, very important to us because we would like to, 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 um, to, to know what you think about, about our sessions, how we can definitely improve them, at least improve the next, the next ones so that we are sure we meet your, your needs and requirements. So don't hesitate to fill in the feedback form. It literally takes one minute. Um, so we'll be more than happy to hear from you. This session today is recorded and it will be the case for all the sessions during the academy and we will make our best to make sure that the session that today's session is available in the LMIS repository folder um, within within one or two hour maximum. So if you missed anything, you will have the opportunity to go to the folder, to the LMIS repository folder and have a look at today's session. Same, once the recordings are available, we'll drop your message on Slack. And I same for present goes for presentation. I'm sure Scott will probably upload his present today's presentations in a few minutes. And I already uploaded. Oh, amazing! Already uploaded. <laughs> Alice, um, sorry, but while you're sharing the screen, could you also add, uh, show them how to add channels? Because I don't think anyone, everyone has all the channels uh, are in all the channels yet. And uh, normally on okay. Sorry. So if you go let back me, to your Slack for a second, please. Yeah. And, uh, let me go back here. So I would believe like here, you, you have this arrow. If you click on it, you will be able to see normally all the channels um, included on Slack. Uh, uh, sorry, you have to click on the plus icon next to channels to find the rest of them. Here oh, we and you add, have to be, yeah, yeah and browse, browse channels. channels. Yeah, that's, that's right. true. Thank you. You will be able to find another question and answer there, for instance, if you click on that. Yeah. And That's it. Join them. Yeah. yeah. Is there any other questions related to? I don't think so. All right. Uh, I've been told that the link should be working now. Please check the links for your uh, survey feedback and for today. Right, so we have two forms there. We have the feedback form, as Alice correct, rightly pointed out, we take very seriously. We do review your feedback every day. And then we have a participant survey. We just want to know a little bit of more information about where you are with your country um, supply chain logistics information system uh, and tell us what things are important to you. We will be looking at the participant survey to maybe potentially revise some of the content over the next few days to be more specific to what you guys are telling us is important to you. So we take these very, very seriously. Please fill out the feedback and the participant survey. Both of them should take no more than five minutes. Okay, so I know that we're a little over time today. Alice, Martin, anything else that we need to mention on the logistically? Uh, nothing from my end, uh, Scott, Alice. Okay. All right. Well, then I just want to say, uh, okay, thanks, Alice. Uh, I, then I just want to also thank all of you all for joining today. Uh, I do apologize for going a little bit over time, but thanks for hanging with us. We will get started again right back here tomorrow at 11 o'clock Oslo time. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, rest of your day, good morning tomorrow, 
and we will see you again soon. So bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.